I like to be prepared. Um, I don't like being caught out necessarily um, w- w- with without anything to say. One of the areas I'm interested in in Christianity is apologetics. So um, we have some wonderful resources to call upon. There are some great people out there who have, who have thought, have been very thoughtful and mindful in, in putting together resources for us um, to fall back on. And, I, and I, I, I try and make the most of those resources so I'm prepared for, particularly for the common questions that you get around suffering, reasons for suffering and all that kind of stuff. And it, I find, for me, that's, that's the best way to deal with those questions. When someone asks me a really tough question pertaining to scripture or the gospel, I don't always give an answer straight away. Sometimes I have to be honest and vulnerable with them to say, I don't know, I don't have an answer, um, but I'm gonna go look. I'm not gonna just leave it as an I don't know. I'm gonna go study and I'm gonna go talk to people I trust and who I think would know the answer um, and then come back around to it. And so I never leave those questions, those hard questions open-ended. Um, if I do know the answer, then I pray in my heart for boldness to share the answer to the hard question, even when it's difficult to hear. So there was a time as a young Christian, I'm sharing my faith in Leicester Square. And I meet this guy who went to a Christian school and knows a lot about the Bible and starts schooling me, uh, telling me about the life of Jesus and how um, Jesus was pierced with a spear, which I kind of knew, but I'd forgotten or didn't read that granular detail. And um, I remember just asking him questions to provoke his thinking uh, in that moment. Questions which, since we were talking about Jesus, pointed back to Jesus, um, such as, what do you think about the fact that the disciples who were spending their lives around him suddenly left him at that moment where he was crucified, uh, yet they came back and seemingly surrendered their whole lives to sharing the message of Jesus after leaving him at the cross. Why would they do that? Did they encounter him? Um, So even though he had good knowledge of the Bible, it was making him think about questions that really um, provoked thought about who Jesus was. I was at a lunchtime gathering up in the city and the talk I was giving was drawing to a close. Then one of the participants, who I later discovered to be the boss of the whole company, asked me this question. Are you really saying, Jeremy, that if there was someone in the city who was a liar, a cheat, spent all their money on drugs and prostitutes, but in the end of their life, they came to God, they would be okay. But if there was someone else who always did their best, gave lots of money to charity, but felt no need of God, they wouldn't. That doesn't make any sense. It was a good, open and honest question. I wonder how you would have answered it. So this is what I said in reply. It's funny you should ask me that, because people ask Jesus the very same question. And this is what he said. I then told him from memory, the story of the prodigal son, which we find in Luke 15. If time had been short, I could have told him the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke 18. I very briefly explained what the story meant, that the father is God, the older son is the second person in your question, and the younger son is the first. The younger son realised he has a problem. He must rely completely on the Father's grace, while the second one thinks he's fine and that the Father owes him. At the end of my answer, my questioner was surprised. He said, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that story was in the Bible. In my experience, the people we meet can have lots and lots of questions. And when they ask me questions, as often as I can, 
I reply by telling them a story from the Bible. I usually take a little time to explain about the story afterwards, as I did in the case of my friend at the lunchtime talk. But as far as possible, I rely on telling them a Bible story. Now, why would I do that? What's so helpful about that approach? Well, firstly, it's a model drawn straight out of the Bible itself. Look at the Lord Jesus. He was the greatest theological teacher of all time. And the majority of his teaching was in the form of stories, often called parables. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. Yes, we know he also taught his disciples pure theology, for example, the Sermon on the Mount. But in the main, he taught the crowd with stories and with illustrations. Stories are memorable and easy to understand, even though I acknowledge, of course, that the parables were also designed to some extent to hide truth. They really fit well into our culture, which rightly or wrongly values stories and personal contributions above abstract propositions. Stories are so useful in dealing with tricky questions. I've had people ask me lots and lots of questions and for each question that they ask, I always try and respond by telling a gospel story. For example, when asked, what about other faiths? I tell them John chapter four, about the Samaritan woman and of the tender way in which Jesus breaks down barriers and explains what true worship looks like. When asked about sex, sexual immorality in our sex-obsessed world, I turn to John chapter eight and tell the actions of Jesus with the woman taken in adultery and of the way in which without condoning her sinful living, He challenges the hypocrisy of those around her while calling her to be the recipient of his grace, mercy and forgiveness. What about when someone says, well, I'm not religious. John chapter three, I can have a fascinating time retelling them the story of Nicodemus. When as many often do, I get the question, I can't believe in a loving God with so much suffering. I love to tell them the story of Jesus and the widow of Nain in Luke chapter seven, or in his grief about the death of Lazarus in John chapter 11, and the subsequent demonstration of his power over death and evil. What about when someone asks a question about their doubts and fears? I love to tell them the story of Jesus in the boat in the middle of the storm with his disciples in Mark chapter four and of his loving and gracious way with Thomas in John chapter 20, who in truth maybe should be called honest Thomas rather than doubting Thomas. Now occasionally an unexpected question can arise and I find it's in those moments that the Holy Spirit prompts us with the right words to say. Recently, for example, someone asked me, my husband just died. He didn't have any belief. Where is he now? I thought, how on earth do I answer that? And then suddenly, the story of the thief and the cross flashed into my mind and I related the grace shown to him in the answer of Jesus, focusing on the only one who's able to judge the heart of any person. So in summary, answering questions where possible with stories that we had seen in the Bible is a model that we see in the Bible itself. But secondly, and more importantly, the word of God itself is incredibly powerful. God's word is much more powerful than anything we can say from our own intellect and our own creativity. For the word of God is living and active, 
sharper than any two-edged sword. It's so important for us to deploy the Word of God in our evangelism and make it available in an accessible form. Of course, it's possible to stop in a conversation and suddenly pull out a Bible to read to a passage or to send someone a link to a sermon or to give someone a book to read. This can be unnatural and impersonal. It breaks the natural flow of discussion. It risks our friends feeling we're Bible bashing them. Instead, if we naturally, simply tell the Bible story, restate the Bible text in our own words, it retains their interest, it continues the conversation, and it often leads to the opportunity to take things further. I've been amazed in the way in which after doing this a few times, we can always be word to word with the original Bible text. It's relatively simple to do. It's also good for your own heart and Christian growth as well. As we acknowledge that it's God's word that has the power, not our own, we're enabled to respond by saying something like, oh, that's a great question. You know, that reminds me of a Bible story, which I found so interesting, and off we go. Short, snappy is the best. Tell the story naturally, briefly, in your own words. Another thing I found is that in our ever-increasingly biblical, illiterate world, almost nobody knows any of the Bible stories. They could therefore come to the hearer through the work of the Holy Spirit with immediacy and power and draw the person into wanting to know more. It's as if Bible stories are a trailer for the film of the gospel message. My follow-up is therefore always to suggest to the person next, would you like to have a look at more of the Bible with me? Or ask your friend if it's a talk, if you like that story, there's loads more, would you like to read some of them with me? Sharing Bible stories in answer to tough questions is a model we see in the Bible and it keeps us depending on God's powerful word. The final reason for answering tough questions with stories and examples from the Bible is that we want to make much of Jesus. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. The whole Bible is about Christ. And so, in answering questions with the Bible, even if we put it in our own words, we will keep the flow of conversation pointing towards Christ. I found that the most effective way to do this is to tell stories about the Lord from the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. I love to make more of Christ and these stories about Jesus bring him into the conversation in such a natural way. Charles Spurgeon was a great preacher of a bygone age. He used to tell the story, if you were lost, every village, every hamlet in England has a road to London. And if you find the road to London, you found where you're going. In his illustration, he would apply the road to Jesus as the road to London. It's the only way to God the Father. It's my conviction that when we tell stories about Jesus, we're always on the London road. We're always on the right road, helping people to see, ultimately, it's what we believe about him that really matters. Because so many times in our conversations with our friends, we can get so easily sidetracked into all of life's little cul-de-sacs. Friends, avoid them. Go to a story about Christ. As we tell a story about Christ, as we keep our focus on him, we cannot help ourselves from sharing what he's like and of how his influence impacts upon us 
and is radically transforming who we are. For example, when we tell the story of Jesus with the thief on the cross, we're able to speak about how Jesus is full of love, that as he was dying, he was thinking of others. As he was dying, he has the power through his death to save, that he invites us to be with him, and that a very small amount of faith in him is enough. Friends, whatever we do, let's tell our friends how amazing Christ is, how much he means to us and what he's like. And I honestly believe the best way to do that is using a story about him. How good that we have gospels that are brimming over with stories about him. Why? It's almost as if they were written for that very purpose. People can ask us questions for all kinds of reasons. Occasionally it's a smokescreen or a diversion, but more often than not, it's coming out of a honest desire to wrestle with or arrive at some sort of answer to a nagging question. Now there's a place for apologetics, but for most of us in our everyday lives, I have found that the simplicity of responding to these questions with an answer from the Bible is all we need. It's what we see in the Bible itself. It has power to change lives and it makes much of Christ. Naturally, informally sharing the Bible deepens our relationship with others and allows us to effectively sow the seeds of God's word in their lives. Let me encourage you, get to know the Bible stories, read them regularly, immerse yourself in them, retell them to others. And when you are asked tough questions by your friends, you will be all the better equipped and empowered to make much of Jesus in your reply. Mm -hmm.